we've seen how we can use parametric descriptions of curves to describe a much wider category of curves than we ever could with the graph of a function. The graph of a function required that it had to pass the vertical line test, but a curve that is described parametrically could be a circle or all sorts of weird squiggly things that we might be interested in understanding. But now our project is, if I have curves that are represented not as the graph of functions, but parametrically, how do I do all of that other calculus that we've done before? How do I figure out, say, the area under a curve? How do I figure out the arc length of a curve and so on? In the previous video, we looked at how to find the slope of the tangent line to a parametric curve. And in this video, we're going to focus on how to figure out the area underneath of a curve. So let's first remind ourselves what we've done in the past. Uh, indeed, integration was defined in many ways to solve that particular problem, to solve the problem of the area under the curve. And we have our traditional formula, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is going to tell us the area under the curve between the points x equal to a and x equal to b. Note that there is one condition, however, it, it requires that our function, our f of x, to be positive. And that's got a little technical detail that we're going to have to pay attention to. So let's suppose that we have a curve expressed parametrically. That is that the x variable is a function of t, and so I'm going to write x of t, and that the y variable is a function of the same parameter t, and so I write y of t. And I'll note here that previously, we, what we had is f of x. We were always thinking of it as, as the y values. The heights were equal to this f of x. So now if I want to manipulate the formula that I have into our new context, I'm going to begin with an integral sign. f of x, which is just the y values, I've now called y of t. And then I'm, I'm left with this little dx. But if I'm going to use the substitution rule, then I can say that, that dx is going to be the same thing here as dx dt dt. In other words, it's going to be the same thing as multiplying dx dt is the same thing as x prime of t and then dt. So in other words, what I've replaced this with is the product of two functions of t and integral with respect to t. Finally, I need to deal with my limits. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to imagine that I have some particular value such that x at the particular value of alpha is just going to be equal to a. So this is the t value alpha is going to give out a. And I'm going to imagine that I have a t value beta that's going to give out b. And then this integral, if I'm changing from x values to t values in my substitution rule, it's going to be the integral from alpha up to beta. So we have shown a, a somewhat loose derivation of this particular formula, the area under the curve when it's described parametrically. And I want to note one thing here. We, we have the same condition, f of x needs to be greater than zero. If I want to talk about an area underneath of a curve, but between the x-axis and the curve, I need to have my assumption being that in this case, my y values are going to be all positive in this region. So let's see a specific example. Here I have some parametrically described curve. And I have two endpoints of it, a 0 and a 2 pi. And I might think that I could just go and plug this into that formula, the integral from 0 to 2 pi. I could plug all the stuff in. However, what we need to verify is that that condition that the y values are always positive is indeed true in this domain. As mentioned, y of t is 1 plus sine of t. And indeed, this is going to be something which is greater than or equal to 0 on this domain and, in fact, on all domains. However, I also have to make sure that in this domain, it can be represented as the graph of a function. Uh, for example, I'll just make something up. Let me suppose that my curve looked like this, and this was my axis. What would it mean to say the area under this curve? It doesn't make any sense because we have these points sort of overlapping each other. And indeed, in the formula that we just derived, we began with the formula for when it was the graph of a function, and we just interpreted it in the new context. So I, I don't claim any, any notion of making sense of the area under a curve if it was to look like that, if there was ever a failing of the vertical line test. So I also want to see that this particular parametric curve does not fail the vertical line test. What I'm showing you here is going to be something that we're going to use to help visualize what this particular parametric curve is. It is a website called Desmos where you can make all sorts of little things like this. And this one, I will leave a link to down in the description. I feel like that was 
really good like YouTube moment. I'm probably because can you please like subscribe and, and leave a like and, and click this box that I'll figure out how to put up there as well. Just my, my good YouTube moment. So what's going to happen here is that I've, I've drawn a circle. And if you, you look at the expression that we have, it was t plus cos t and 1 plus sine of t. So I want you to focus first on just the cos and the sine part. We have seen before that x equal to cosine of t and y equal to sine of t, it graphs a circle. Then if I look at the plus 1 that I have, well, if it's the plus 1 in the y coordinate, it takes that circle of radius 1 about the origin and it shifts it up 1. So that covers most of it. We, we In the y coordinate, it's a circle, and it's shifted up one. And indeed, that's what we appear to have here. This is a circle of radius one, and it's shifted up a value of one. But the tricky part is that in the x coordinate, it's not just cosine of t, it's cosine of t plus t. So let's think about what happens as t gets larger. I'm trying to draw out this circle, but my x values are sort of linearly moving along at this constant speed. As the t values get larger, everything shifts to the right. So it's like I'm trying to draw a circle, but, but everything keeps on rolling off to the right. Now, watch what happens in this particular Desmos package. I have a little slider bar u here, and you can sort of see down in the code that it describes u plus cosine of t. So I can graph what happens for every specific value of t here. So I'm going to slide my u along. And what's happening is it's like I'm trying to draw out the edge of that circle, but I'm keeping track of my points. And as my t values get larger and larger and larger, it forms out that particular curve. So this, this sort of circle of radius 1 just rolls along down the x-axis, and it forms the curve that I want to do. And I can slide it backwards. Well, I can roll the other direction, and I can sort of sweep away my curve. And so... This, this idea of forming a circle, but as you form the circle, you're shifting your points to the right by this factor of adding t, that's why I get a curve that looks, looks like this. Now, this is kind of just sort of fun as an aside because it's just a really cool parametric curve. It's called a cycloid. But the lesson for our specific example is let's look at the curve we have. It is all positive, and it satisfies the vertical line test. So I'm happy using my area formula, and I can figure out the area under this curve. All right, let's just uh, plug away. I can now come and say that this is going to be the integral from my alpha is 0, my beta is going to be 2 pi, my y coordinate is going to be 1 plus sine of t, and then after writing down my, my y, that's what I just wrote down here, that was my y, I need to multiply by my x prime. So the derivative of t is just going to be 1, and then 1 minus sine of t, and all of this dt. And this is just a definite integral, so we can go ahead and do it. And so we get the value pi, which is always just kind of cool.